Hello, I'm Jay Smith, Senior Pastor at State Street United Methodist Church. I'm so pleased that you're joining us for this service of worship. If you do not have a church home, I want to invite you to join us in person each Sunday morning at 8.08 and 10 a.m. We're located at the corner of State and 11th Streets in Bowling Green. And you can also find us on our website at www.statestreetumc.org. And now may you be blessed by this service of worship. Grace and peace in your responses and also with you. Grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. I want to welcome you to the worship service. If you're a guest visiting today, my name is Jay Smith. I'm really pleased that you've come to worship. You could be a lot of places today, but you've chosen to worship God and to worship with us. We don't take that lightly. We're delighted that you've come our way. If you are visiting today, a couple of things for you to be aware of. There are Get Connected cards on the pews all around you. We would love to reconnect about the ministries of the church. You can bring that card to me after the service at the back doors or to my left, your right over here by these architect renderings. Uh, someone will greet you there. They would love to give you uh, a gift and to share information related to our church. So keep those two things in mind if you're visiting today. I want to give just a brief report the bazaar. We had a great day on Tuesday. I've been told that we raised nearly $9,000 that we will be able to give away to other people. How about that? Isn't that great? And I don't know whose tie this was that was donated. I liked it. I paid a dollar for it. And if you didn't know that your wife gave it to the bazaar, and you want it back, I'll sell it to you for $10 and give that to the mission. So it's up to you. But I like the tie. I'm going to keep it unless you've got a better offer for me. Finally, uh, today is Commitment Sunday. Many of you are aware of that. If you're a guest, you wouldn't be aware of that. But today is when we bring forth our pledge cards related to our annual giving and ministries, commitments, and also to the Strong Foundation, Strong Future capital campaign. Chip Lawson is right back there. If you just realized, oh my goodness, I left my card at home. I know exactly where it's at, but I forgot it, which can happen. Uh, Chip would be glad. If you want to, if you just raise your hand, Chip can get you a card and, that you can use. So just be aware of that. Just raise your hand and Chip will be making his way around. We have extra cards for those of us who may have left them other places. And Chip, you can use that one if someone needs it. Thank you, sir. Well, we've all come today uh, for the exact same reason, and that's to worship God. I'm so glad you've come. Let us worship the Lord.
invite you on this Thanksgiving Sunday to stand and join in our call to worship, which you may find printed in your bulletin. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. And now, as we remain a thankful people, I invite you to join in singing number 788 in your white hymnal this morning. Now thank we all our God. Please remain standing as you're able and join our voices now together. The historic affirmation, the Apostles' Creed, it's printed in your bulletin. Would you join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. It can be found on page 1146 in your pew Bible or page 1801 in large print. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they give as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. This is the word of the Lord. Now as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning, I invite you to join in singing number 170 in your white hymnal, Give Thanks. Almighty and loving God, we do come this morning to give you thanks. We give you thanks as your grateful children, not blindly accepting the blessings we enjoy as though they are due to us, but in recognition that you are the giver of all good gifts. We thank you for the joy and optimism of children, for their artwork to decorate our refrigerators, for their joyful voices lifted in song. We thank you for the boldness and energy of youth and for the wisdom that comes with age. We give you thanks for family, friends, and the freedom to worship, for the food and laughter that will be shared around our tables this week. And at that same time, God, we acknowledge and pray for comfort for the pain that many will experience this holiday when loved ones are missing from these celebrations. We also know that there are many around the world and indeed right here in Bowling Green with no table and no food of their own to share. And while we cannot fully rest in you when our minds stay focused on these worldly things, we need you so desperately to intervene in our earthly concerns and we cannot help but think of them when we pray. And you've invited us to share all of our concerns with you so this, this week, Lord, we, we pray for the lives that have been torn apart by an earthquake, by still more shootings, and by abuse and allegations of abuse. We ask that you would receive all of these concerns and those that we hold in our heart. Help us to give them up so that we might focus fully on you during this time of prayer and worship. And not only now, but we ask that you would let your peace and grace carry us even when we leave this place. As we go about our daily business, let us be like the one leper who returned to give you thanks. Let our gratitude be followed by commitment 
a commitment to love you and your world by the giving of our time and our resources. Receive the pledges that we are going to give today as gifts given out of gratitude. And we ask that you would receive our service as a response to all that you've done for us. We thank you for those who will use their time this week to make sure that many in our community will not go without this Thanksgiving. And we ask for your blessings on all the locations of the Room in the Inn ministry that has begun this week, and especially on this church tonight as we host for the first time this season. Let us look in the faces of our guests and in the faces of one another and see the face of Jesus. It's in his name and for his glory that we pray together now the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before God's grateful people give back of their tithes and offerings, I want to lift up some other ways that you can give back using your time. One is we still need delivery drivers on Thursday. If you can come and deliver some carry-out meals to those in need across Bowling Green, even for an hour or two on Thanksgiving, we would love to have your help. There's a sign-up sheet outside the church office. And we will also take pies, uh, desserts, and things that we can share with them as well. We'll have a... Pardon? Uh, if you want to deliver, we'll be ready 9.30, 10 o'clock Thursday morning. And you just show up and we'll fill, fill your hands with some meals and give you an address to go to. And um, you can help us bless others that way. We'll also be here all day Wednesday, cupping cranberry sauce and cooking apples and things like that. And if you have some free time that day, we'd love to have you join us. And finally, um, if you would like to use your time to love God with your mind, I commend these brochures to you. They're outside the church office, and they have a listing of all the Sunday school classes, things that are going on on Sunday mornings. Uh, we had a new one start today about Joseph. Christmas through the eyes of Joseph across the street in the Life Tree Cafe, and I will start one next Sunday morning, the top floor of our educational building on this side of the street, trying to find Bethlehem in the midst of Bedlam, Christmas in the middle of confusion. So I recommend both of those classes to you as well. And now I invite our ushers to come forward to receive God's tithes and our offerings.
Almighty God, receive these gifts given from grateful hearts and willing hands. Use them to grow your kingdom. Bless the gifts and the givers. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Now I invite all the kids to come down front for some time together. morning. A few more of our friends joining us this morning. I brought something to share with you guys today. Y'all know what this is? An orange. So if I open this up, what would we find inside? Is it one solid thing like an apple? What's different about this? Is that what you would say? Fat crescent moons inside? Like, right. Orange slices, right? So you could divide it up. Well, it's... Oh, that's right. So I, I heard a story this week that I wanted to share with you guys. There were these kids who didn't have mom and dads, and they lived in a big home together with some people to take care of them. But they were very, very poor, and they didn't have many special things. At Christmas, one time a year, they got something special. And guess what it was? An orange. That was their whole thing. That was all they got. But they looked forward to that day every year. But one year, there was this, this little boy who broke the rules right before Christmas. And the man who lived in the house with him said, I am really sorry but you've broken the rules, and this year, you're not going to get your orange. And the boy was so, so sad, and he went to bed, and he cried himself to sleep. But the next morning, he woke up, and he found ten little orange slices next to his bed because all of his friends had opened their oranges and shared a piece with him. They had more than enough, and he received a special, special blessing. And that's what happens when we share. When we take what's ours and we share it with someone else, it turns into a blessing. Isn't that amazing? So I brought these oranges to share with you all, not just a slice, but you can have a whole one to eat later on.
All God's children did say, Amen. For the past five weeks, we've been looking at a series of sermons related to generosity. We're in the midst of our capital campaign, Strong Foundation, Strong Future. Today is our commitment and Thanksgiving Sunday. And uh, the text for today is taken from the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. You may know that Luke wrote more of the New Testament than any other writer. The Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, also written by Luke. And so this is the seminal work, if you will, of the New Testament. And the book of Acts of the Apostles gives us a glimpse at what the early church, the early followers of a Jesus, the impact that he had made on their lives. And so Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. For those of you that are able, would you please stand and honor the reading of God's holy word. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The gospel writer Luke writes, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Don't you want to share with your sisters? It was a question, something like that. Don't you want to share with your sisters? That's the question in my family. I had two older sisters, and my parents are here today. My father's birthday is tomorrow. My dad or my mom are sitting there with Jericho. They can back me up on this. And when they would ask me that, of course, being a future preacher, I always wanted to share with my sisters, didn't I? Don't you want to share with your sisters. Now, if you had brothers, the question was, don't you want to share with your brothers? You see, that question, it challenged the philosophy represented by the third word that most of us learned as children, the the third word. Sorry about this, gentlemen, but the first word is usually and normally what? Mama, right? The second word, daddy. The third word. There's some dispute among us, but I. The third word, mine. Mine. Don't you want to share with your sisters? I thought it, I didn't say it because I'm not stupid. I thought, well, uh, not really. (laughs) No, I'm good. Thanks for asking, though. Right? Don't you want to share with your sisters? It challenged what was one of the first and greatest challenges that any of us have ever had to take on early in life, and that is the challenge to learn how to share. It's, it's interesting to me that in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, you see the, the church is only two chapters old. In the second chapter of Acts, the Holy Spirit falls, the apostles are gathered there, the disciples, and it fills them, and, and they go out. And in the fourth chapter, we get this glimpse of the beginning of the church. We get this glimpse of these first Jesus followers. And the book of Acts, throughout the book of Acts, it's, it's a glimpse at the primary characteristics 
of the believers. It's the primary marks of being a Christian. It's those qualities that Luke wants us to understand that to be on this Jesus movement, to be with Jesus, these are the qualities, these are the characteristics. Did you hear them? Acts chapter 4. All the believers were one in heart and mind. <laughs> I mean, in my family, we can't even agree where we're going to lunch. You, you want to talk about the movement of the resurrected Christ? All the believers of one heart and mine. No one, no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. No mine. Mine. But they shared everything they had. And Luke tells us, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of Jesus. How did they do that? He tells us, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them. How was it powerfully at work in them? They had no needy person among them. Nobody had a need. And he gives an example. He said, from time to time, those who owned land or houses, they sold them and they brought the proceeds and they put it at the apostles' feet and anyone anyone who had need the need was met friends if somebody should ask you what was one of the earliest evidences of the resurrection of Jesus that Jesus rose from the grave and it was true one of the earliest characteristics of being a follower of Jesus if someone should ask you that the answer is not the answer is not, oh, they spoke in tongues. The answer is not, oh, they, they had miraculous healing. The disciples and the apostles healed those around them. It's not that they could walk on water or do that water to wine thing that Jesus did. It wasn't, it wasn't a single individual faith accomplishment. It wasn't, see what Peter did, see what John did, see what James did. It wasn't anything. You see, the earliest witness, the earliest testimony that the resurrection of Jesus had happened and it had transformed people in such a mighty way, the first evidence of it is that there is this communal, collective sharing and generosity. What our mamas and daddies tried to get us to understand as toddlers. Don't you? Don't you want to share with your sisters? And Luke tells us this, this is the earliest witness. This is the earliest testimony. God's grace was so powerfully among them that they didn't view what was theirs as theirs. They viewed it as a gift from God and God blessed them and so they were going to share it. Now I realize, I realize that's not very spectacular and that's not very flashy. It would be, we would like it better if they were going around doing miracles and walking on water. That would be more impressive. But for Luke, he wants us to understand that the first transformation in the early life of the church was the church understood moving from mine to ours. Mine to ours. And that was the journey. And friends, that can be, that can be the longest and the hardest journey for any of us to make. The journey from mine to ours. You see, to view by God's grace that everything I have, everything I am, everything I ever hope to be is by the grace of God and it is pure gift to me. And to view it in such a way that it is not even no longer considered mine, 
but it is already ours. And the book of Acts suggests that's, that's the proof that Jesus was alive. How many of you are tired from the missions bazaar? Be honest, ladies. I mean, a little weary. Some of you might want to set out the rest of the service. I'll give you permission. You don't have to stand up for the closing hymn if you're really tired. I mean, some of us are really tired. Wasn't the bazaar a month ago? I mean, it seems like so long ago. It was Tuesday, right? It was a lot of hard work. But you know what? It was fun. I don't know if you had fun. I had fun. And the reason I had fun is because this $9,000 that we made, we get to give away and we get to bless other people. I mean, how much more fun can you have on a day that you give of yourself in such a way that you know that it's not coming back to you, but that it's going to be multiplied in such a way that you're going to get to bless a whole lot of other people? And come this Thursday, this Thursday, in the, in the fellowship hall of our church, this morning in the kitchen, there were 41 turkeys. They were well behaved. <laughs> Thawing out. They're at Rafferty's now. Thank you, John Renfro and Rafferty's. Little product placement there. But come Thursday, where's Ben Lawson? There's Ben. Man, we need more drivers, don't we? I mean, people need to, people need to sign up. You need to show up. Because I'll tell you, what, what you're going to experience is the fact that there are going to be a thousand people in this community that are going to be blessed because you and I view not what we have as ours, but it belongs to them already. And that's a hard journey. It's a hard journey in our culture. Because in our culture, what do we value? We value, and rightly so, we value liberty, we, we value freedom, and we value independence. And I've worked for everything I've gotten. Hey, back off. It's mine. And that's what we value. And we don't, we don't realize, we're not even conscious of the fact that how that keeps it, it becomes a barrier to the fact that we don't even realize that everything has been a gift to us. And we can't move from from mine to ours. And it's worse for some of us. It's worse for people like me because I grew up up, uh, in the me generation. I'm on the tail end of the baby boomers. And the me generation, there's one criteria, only one criteria for us to get involved and be a part of anything. And the one criteria is this, what's in it? For me, what am I going to get out of it? And so this journey of realizing that what is mine is not mine, but it's it's ours, it's hard. In the wedding, maybe maybe uh, those of you that are married, that's a challenge that you have early in your marriage. And actually, it's in it's in the wedding ceremony, and and many times it's not unusual the weddings I do that that the the bride or the groom, when they say these words to each other, they kind of smile at each other. And sometimes, I had one not long ago, he just kind of started chuckling a little bit because they were exchanging rings and the the liturgy for exchanging the rings, you you place the ring on, on the person's hand and you say, I give you this ring and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. And usually one of them kind of smiles because they realize they don't have anything. <laughs> I mean, Mary and I, we had three crock pots and two rocking chairs and the two cars that were barely duct taped together. I mean, you don't have anything and you're standing there, all that I am and all that I have. And usually one of them will kind of get, get kind of silly about that. But that's the challenge, isn't it? Now it's not mine, it's, it's ours. And how do we navigate that it's ours now? Those of us that grew up in the Methodist tradition, 
John Wesley, man, he was such a role model. Wesley, one of his greatest quotes was, gain all you can, save all you can, give all you can. And he just didn't say it, he lived at Wesley when he was a student at Oxford in his early 20s. He made 28 pounds a year as a fellow at Lincoln College at Oxford, 28 pounds. And as the years went by, that went to 30, all the way up to 120 pounds a year, Wesley income increased. And Wesley, to the day he died, he lived. He lived on the same 28 pounds and all the rest. He gave it away. And he said, he said, those of you that would bury him, he said, if you find more than 10 pounds in my possession at my death, you have every right to call me a robber. Wesley understood in a deep way that it's not mine, it's, it's ours. And who knows what God can do with that if, if we embrace that. It's like the Apostle Paul, the, the scripture that Janae read about the Macedonian Christians. They were overjoyed. Now, why were they overjoyed? And why should we care about the offering that the Macedonians gave to the saints in Jerusalem? Because Paul is taking up a collection for the widows. We're not sure why there was such a large number of widows in Jerusalem. But these widows had been Jews before they were Christians. And Paul's churches, he was starting churches in the Gentile world. And he was going around and he was saying to the Gentiles, don't you want to share with your sisters in Jerusalem? And they just leaped at the opportunity. He went around and he asked the offering of all the churches and they gave. They gave for widows that they would never know and never meet. Don't you want, don't you want to share with your sisters? Today uh, is Commitment Sunday. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. We're wrapping up in some sense this strong foundation, strong future. And friends, if it's challenged any of us and all of us to do one thing, it's, it's to always ask ourselves, whose is this? What is this about anyway? Whose church is this? Who does all this belong to? And the right answer is, it's God's church. It's Jesus' church. And every single one of you and every single person that we encounter in this community, God loves them already. And because God loves them already, it belongs to them as well. That's why, George, tonight when you gather down for the first guest, and they stay in our church tonight for the very first time, it's not just doing something nice. It's reminding ourselves that this church is not ours to begin with. It's Jesus' church. It's God's church. And because of that, because of that, we can view this not as mine, but it's ours. Friends, none of this is... this. That pew you're on is not yours. Now, I was asked to leave a pew earlier today. <laughs> and I know you're joking. Mostly. Right? You know, there's one... When you think about it, there's one word that is more anti-Christ than any other word. And that's the word... Mine. Mine. We're going to sing a, a, our closing hymn of commitment and thanksgiving. And some of you are prepared to bring your commitment cards today. And I want to invite you to do so in this way. I want you to come forward and, and I want you to just place, uh, place your cards uh, on the altar rail. We don't have baskets today. We didn't want to use baskets. We wanted you to place them on the rail. And if you feel comfortable and you want to pray and reflect, we would invite you to do that as well. And then just simply return to your seats.
But I want you to think about a couple of things as you bring your card. It's not just a, a numbers or whatever it might be on a, on a piece of paper. I want to suggest to you that when you come forward today, you are connecting. You are connecting with the first testimony, the first witness of the early church, those that follow Jesus, their lives were characterized, first of all, by sharing, by generosity. I want you to think of it this way. Could you hear God's voice today saying, don't you want to share with your sisters? Don't you want to share with your brothers? And by the grace of God, because we've grown up now and we've matured in Christ Jesus, the response is, yes, I do. Glory to God. I do. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and we praise you. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And in our best moments, we realize that our life is a gift, every breath we breathe is a gift, the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the cars that brought us to this service of worship, this beautiful church, Everything is gift from you, and we thank you. Oh, God, give us hearts and minds as those early followers of Jesus that we would take that journey and make that journey with you, a journey from mine to ours, in such a way that you can do far more than we could ever imagine. We commit it to you today. We offer it to you with glad and generous hearts for what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who was your gratitude made flesh, your Son and our Savior, our brother and our friend. And all God's sharing, Christians did say, Amen. Dear friends, we would invite you. Lee's going to lead us in our closing hymn of commitment, and we would just invite you as the Spirit would lead you to bring your cards forward. Place them on the altar rail. I do invite you to stand and join in singing our hymn of discipleship. It's in your white hymnal, number 597, Take My Life and Let It Be.
my friends, if I don't see you uh, before Thanksgiving, I hope you have the most blessed Thanksgiving this week. Let's pray and consecrate uh, these mind to ours offerings today as we close. Gracious God, we thank you once again for the gift and the capacity that you give to us to be generous, to share with sisters and brothers in this place and beyond. Lord, consecrate these gifts. Bless them, multiply them, use them in such a way to bring your kingdom more real and known on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us the grace and the courage that we need as those early followers of Jesus knew that everything is a gift from you. Oh God, may we answer with joy each day. Don't you want to help? Don't you want to share? And our answer will be, by your grace, yes we do. To the glory of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and all God's children did say, Amen.